Hi everybody, welcome to the Mom's Choice Awards studio at BEA 14 and I'm here this afternoon with Deborah LaChalet, author of Polly and Her Pigtails, an age of storytelling book. Welcome to BEA. Thank you Terry, I'm happy to be here. I was so excited to hear about your book. I'm a history person myself, so I love characters that are set in different periods of time. And when we were off camera, you were talking about Polly being a girl, seven years old, in the 1900s. Why did you pick the early turn of last century as the backdrop? That's a great question. So all, this is the first book in the Age of Storytelling book series, which is about generational storytelling. So Polly was actually my grandmother, and this is set in the early 1900s. It's a book about a little girl who feels she that looks are more important than anything. That's timeless. <laughs> I have a 12-year-old that thinks the exact same way. But go ahead, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Um, so the story evolves, and we see Polly transform, actually with the help of the bully in the story. Uh, there was an incident, um, so each of the stories introduces historical elements of the era. So in the case of Polly, it introduces the inkwell. Remember that? I do okay. remember that. So Billy the Bully dips Polly's pigtails in the inkwell. And it, the story evolves in that her mother has to cut off her pigtails in order for her to transform and understand that beauty isn't the most important thing. Um, and the uh, quote in the book is, pretty is as pretty does, which I heard as a little girl many, many times from my parents, my grandmother, and my, uh, my mother. Now, you know, one of the things that we were also talking about was the fact that, you know, this is clearly a, a family story. You know, Polly's with her family and her mother and helping her with her hair and understanding what beauty is. But it's also bigger than that. I mean, do you see it being used in a classroom or a broader setting? I do. Mostly because each story, and in the case of Polly, there is a core value lesson to learn, and it is on self-esteem, which is really, to me, the greatest gift you can help your child learn. But also, in the today, it's ever so relevant, because I think self-esteem is what uh, you know, helps kids get through bullying kids or not feeling bullied by other kids and having a, uh, helping foster a strong self-esteem in kids is really as important to parents as it is to teachers and, uh, and everybody really. So, you know, as we were talking off screen even and the fact that this is a personal story that you could share and, you know, it, it does bring the generations together. It has great value. You talked about, you know, teachers and librarians using this for bullying, how else can they use the book? Because self-esteem is really, comes from within, and as an adult, you're trying to convey a concept and get them to understand. How would you do that? Well, in the book, there is a section, I call it parent or teaching tool section at the back that offers uh, tips on how to build healthy self-esteem in children. So it's the last page of the book. There's also a, a little cutaway um, for all of the historical elements that were uh, referenced in the book. So you get to learn a little bit about marbles or about penmanship or about the inkwell that kids today may not really understand. No, and there, I mean, girls definitely understand what changes when you cut your pigtails, so that's <laughs> awesome. I am so glad you were able to join us well, today. Thank Thanks so for coming much. to the studio. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right.